Hello. Hi, folks. I'm going to check the audio, make sure that we're not sounding like robots, but having some weird audio issues. Uh, I totally forgot to actually check, because you can check before by pressing on monitor, and I totally forgot. But uh, hopefully it's working. So anyhow, welcome. This is WIP, work in progress with me, little Limmy, and uh, my good friend and uh, technical genius, uh, Alex Radio Bomb Lippman. How's it going, Alex? Yeah, going well, mate. Yep, thanks. A bit hot. A bit is, warm. It is very hot. We're going through a heat wave down here in the south of France. Yeah. So if you notice us sweating, it's not because we're fat. It's because we're hot. Yeah, yeah, it's got nothing o- Only to do. the beats are fat and the <laughs> bass lines. Awesome. So, yeah, today we're doing a, like a, uh, a an A&R session. And essentially, like as you know, like people that have been following the stream, uh, welcome. Yeah, and uh, please, con- please continue following. Press follow if you're not following. Do it. And, uh, yeah, so people that have been following the stream know that we've been making tunes week in, week out, just churning them out, like just, you know going for it but you can't just make tunes in a vacuum you know you'd like it's cool it's fun but there's another there's a whole nother side to music which is the music industry and uh which is involved with the uh like the packaging and then the distribution of music now luckily uh, uh we have digital distribution now which is pretty easy to get into you just pay a little bit of money you upload your music and it gets thrown out there onto the platforms but then it's up to you to promote it and to market it. And obviously, you know, most individuals like ourselves, we don't have tens of thousands of, you know, pounds, euros and yens and dollars to throw at each of our tunes. So it's kind of interesting to, you know, to kind of decide where you want to send your tunes, how you want to release them, what type of, uh, uh, you know, market you, you're you going to, you know, uh, throw them into and so on. So. That's why it's good to take stock, listen to your tunes and think, well, okay, what am I going to do with these tunes now that I've made them? And uh, do we just throw them away, never be heard of again into the vault so that, you know, like Prince, we can be releasing albums years after we've died? Or or do we like uh, immediately, this has got to go, this has got to go super quick, it's relevant, let's throw it up today? Or... Do we want to do remix or do we want to get some guest star on this tune and so on? So we've got a bunch of tunes in the box and we've, we've been kind of looking, trawling through the computer and finding the different ch- the different tunes and then we're going to play them for you and uh, discuss their genesis, like how we made them. And then uh, discuss, you know, what, what plans we have for those tunes, if any. And so, you know, just to, like I say, just having a look at another part of the process, because that's what work in progress is all about. It's like going through the different steps in the process. Those that used to watch us when we were on uh, Facebook and Instagram will remember the mastering sessions that we did over in Radio Bomb Studios. It's a prime example of that, just like delving into like, oh, let's have a look at, you know, what happens when we just want to master a tune and... uh, and why would we want to master a tune and what does that entail and so on. Incidentally, those tunes that we mastered are available to listen to and to download. You can just uh, look for Little Limmy WIP and uh, on any of, you know, Spotify or on, uh, you know, iTunes, any of the things and you will find those tunes there. But I can't remember the names of them. Some of them are like just little skits. Other ones are pretty neat. Or some tunes have got like... Uh, uh, D.B. Clifford guesting on them, and uh, and that was a laugh. Like, uh, was it Jiggle My, Jiggle My Rig? Yes, yeah. that, that was a, a classic. You know, it gets played. It's, it's had it's had quite a few plays. Old Jiggle My Rig, yeah, yeah. And um, and then there's um, you know some other ones on there, some more like soul tracks on there. And so yeah, so you know, what, what's nice from uh, my perspective, Limmy, is the changing of style completely between the different sessions so as we listen back to this um these tracks that we've bounced down um there's a range of tempos there's a range of styles of playing there's a range of different instrumentation 
in all of the tracks. So I just throw that out there. No, that's true. And um, and another thing that's kind of interesting, and and I I was I you know, we were chatting about it the other week was that within all of that, there's a sound that's starting to emerge. I think in big part due to black hole, but we won't. <laughs> we'll talk that, more about that later. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk more about that later. But the, but uh, but yeah, there's a certain like soundscape because obviously I'm using a lot. You know, I'm using just live instruments for the most part. Yeah, and, and uh, in general, for the mics, we're we're staying fairly low key. We've got a Shaw drum mic kit, which is uh, Beta Fifty Two for the kick, Fifty uh, Sevens for everything else. And uh, sometimes we use the American equivalent, which is the Audix drum mic kit, uh, which has its own set of equivalent mics. So two different tones coming straight from the mics, and sometimes we're plugging in guitar amps and miking them, and sometimes we're going directly in and putting on a sim as a VST. So again, a lot of different ways of skinning the cat, as it were. Oh no, absolutely! Like we've been, we've been using what you know, and then we still are only really scratching the surface of what what we've got and how we've been using it. And I, you know, I still haven't really pulled out many of my uh, obscure laboratory toys that I have in the in the uh, behind the, the door to nowhere, as uh, as Amazon Production calls it. So, um, there's another room in the studio where I've got a lot of like outboard and um, box room analog gear that's just kind of lying around there that we you know we dug out some of them we dug out my mpc 1000 uh and we used that at one point probably bring it back again i need to give it some tlc because it's it's pretty mashed up really and um uh, but uh but you know we have other i've got other machines and bits and pieces that you know we we use the fat man as well yeah i think we'll use that again yeah, and um, yeah, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of like we had the Personas, uh mic preamp, yep. half preamp we used, and uh, and a bunch of other bits and pieces. And like I say, there's still more to come that I haven't, I haven't, I haven't even used yet. That we'll definitely get back into using because it's you know, use what you got, man. Like I say, like if you've got bit little bits and pieces in the studio, don't be afraid. Just because everyone's using logic doesn't mean you you have to do that you know? well as as a reinforcement of what you just said each box imparts a certain character and if that fits within your mix it's a win oh, absolutely and uh from another perspective if you don't have that box it's unlikely that you'll get that character so it, it, it's not even a case of having super expensive gear often it's just a case of knowing what you want and using it appropriately. Oh no, absolutely! Like I mean, a lot of the stuff that I collected throughout the years was with a specific view. You know, something I read on Sound and Sound, or some type of you know legendary piece of inexpensive kit that's just brilliant for its cost and for its size. And so I kept my my ear to the ground until I managed to come across one and then nabbed it. You know, I, I had the 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 innovation base station keyboard for a while it broke down unfortunately but you know it was weird I was waiting for years to find one of those and then I went into a store and there was two of them <laughs> and I always kicked myself for not buying both of them because they were super cheap it's like thirty five quid each I'm sure I could have got done a deal if I bought them both but I thought you know I I was pretty broke and I just couldn't justify spending more than 50 quid on <laughs> anything <laughs> but you know so i bought one and i was just oh, i was it really hurt me to let leave the other one there and so you know when mine broke down i was like damn it you see i knew i should have bought both of them and I had one just you know in mothballs for when the other one broke down because they're very very cheap designs like plastic but they make the best bass sounds that exist ever and uh, I used to, I, I had, I, I, you know, I'd program the the bass sound in the, in the Novation, and then sample it into the MPC, and I had the most stupid bass, just, just the stupidest bass that you've ever heard ever, and even like, you know, Rodney from Bruce he was like, 
I used, you know, I used the NPC when we toured Germany and we did this gig and the guys were doing this strange dance on stage. And afterwards I was like, man, you guys were doing that crazy dance. And they were like, listen, man, there was so much bass that it was tickling our feet. So we were actually lifting our feet off the ground to avoid being tickled by the vibrations of there was so much bass, man. That's funny. And uh, and so yeah, so like and, and you know, like I say, it's just one of those things where to, you know to to be able to have that as your source sound for bass and to be able to because it's a synthesizer, you could just, you know add like a sawtooth, a sine wave, and loads of other bits and pieces on it, and like an octave and a half, you know, little keyboard, and uh, uh, was it two octaves? I can't remember. It wasn't very much. Really, really small machine. But like I say, you could just make the wickedest bass sound and then sample it in, filter it down, and you just, you know, bass for days, man. And uh, it was no wonder why the Novation bass, uh, I mean, like the rack version was a must-have in a lot of project studios in the hi early hip-hop area with the Planet Fat. Yeah. They were two of the main sounds that you heard on all of these records, you know, like whether it's Q-Tip or Public, you know, all, all those guys, they had, you know, those soundscapes. And so it was something, when I heard that there was an actual keyboard version of that, that had a really short, like, release, uh, but was kind of, you know, they didn't continue it because it was so flimsy and it got such bad reviews for being like a toy, you know. But it had all the processing power of the rack. I was like, I need to find one. So when I did, I was like, yo. And it was the same with the Fat Man, you know. I knew about the Fat Man, uh, you know, Valve, um, compressor and uh tla audio makes some great yeah, yeah yeah and uh, that they'd made this weird version of it that they'd made this desktop version that was very specific and it had a couple of really nice design concepts like the the way the knobs are are, are set up is different to a normal compressor they're in reverse so when you turn it up yeah, it turns it up it doesn't turn it down you know because normally with compressors when you turn up compression it turns the sound down, right? right yeah. Where they shifted it, so it's the other way around. <laughs> and then, then you know, and you can plug, you can plug in from the front, you can plug in from the back, and so it was kind of designed to for people that were, you know, uh, recording with computers, and uh, you could have it hardwired in, or you could just, you know, plug in from the front if you really wanted to plug a guitar or a bass or a keyboard, and and you know, and warm it up with these valves before it went into the computer. So it's another awesome piece of gear, but again, very difficult to find that version of it, like the the desktop version, because it doesn't, it's, you know, it's not very practical. It doesn't fit in a rack or anything like that. It's really to be put on the desk. And again, like you know, same shop, man. It's an absolutely brilliant shop. I forgot what it's called. It's called like X, a, a, X uh, X Music Equipment or something. It was in Hammersmith, and they just had the craziest stuff going through that shop. And so I'd always go in there, you know, whenever I had a couple of pounds in my pocket. And, uh, yeah, I came across that that machine in there and immediately bought it. I was like, I've got to have it. Nice. So anyway, speaking of, like, music and weird and original sounds, we just came across this one tune, which was, uh, you were saying, was the, like a disco tune. Oh, yeah. Let's have a, let's have a listen to that. Okay. Because it's been literally, uh, it's been a very long time. This is like a, this is this is not a proper. Mi it was just like a rough mix that we did when we originally uh, did the did the session. So it's not like a like a, a revisited mix. Like we, we would call it a very rough mix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so. It's interesting to listen to this. So this would be considered more of a demo than a finished mix. Hey, Saturday night, baby. Time to get your step on. Go party. All right. Easy levels. Is that loud enough? Yeah, that's pretty nice. Huh. So you run on. Let me get on there.
Let's do it. So there we go. Uh, the mix is a bit rough there. The Franz vocals obviously very loud compared to other elements, and it's all a bit hot. No, definitely. I mean, like I say, like this, this was a uh, like a print we did at the end of the session, as yeah. opposed to like a, a, a after a mixing session, because we started it's to get you know, right. like a, a you know into like a workflow of uh, just making the tune. It, you know, and getting all the elements together and the rough mix, and then that's it. And then, uh, you know, la later on, once our ears have kind of moved on, coming back to that song and then giving it a mix. Yeah. But I thought, you know, I thought it was an interesting one to to listen to, uh, simply because it's not it's not properly mixed. It's like a, a, a rough mix that we spend a bit of time like just deciding oh we'll just let's do this and let's just throw this here sure and everyone was very excited by the vibe of the song as well like uh, yeah yeah we were all hyped we were hyped to, with with that tune very sort of uh james brownie uh, sort of uh jb production flex to it and don't you think that that snare sound is absolutely disgustingly horrible <laughs> it's just like what is what Sounds like you've taken the drums, set fire to it, and then just thrown it into the into a bath, you know. <laughs> just dropped was it. Was that the one with the with the, where the whole snare was pitched up? No, this, uh, I think what we did with this one was we actually put distortion on it. Oh, we definitely did that. Yeah, yeah but I tuned it quite. I, like I actually tuned the drums a bit low. Like they're not. They you know they're not like they're, they kind of go cool, cool cool like that they've got a really low sounding uh, uh, resonance to it so it's very possible that I because I every so often I'll change the way the snare is tuned up just to make it more horrible and and then when Daniel comes in he'll be like your, your drum kit's totally out of tune do you know that and then he <laughs> tune it up and uh, but uh, but yeah so I think in that one we were we were dealing with a low pitched uh, uh, snare so, should we move on to another, another track? 
Uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, like I say, like I thought this one was an interesting one to listen to because it's got more of a demo feel to it. Like, so you know, it would be interested. You know, if like you know, you were doing this, it would be more like you'd be playing this to people more as to give them an idea of the song. Like, hey, check this out. This is like a new song that we wrote. Blah blah blah. As opposed to being like, yeah, this is the tune. I want you to sign me right now, and we'll release it tomorrow because it's not on a sound level it's not ready like you know the, as as alex says there's a lot of stuff that could you know would be worth the, like editing out and bits that you know need to be of a, of a of a more comfortable level and things like that so yeah we could we can we can put that into the demo pile and that means that we need to go back into you know back into that particular like pro tools file and actually give it a, a decent mix So, um, next. Yep. WIP IQ SDP You know me Scruffy D In the place Radio Bomb Oh yeah Gotta do what you wanna do Just do what you wanna do Just do what you wanna do Just watch your behavior Like a cup of food with the flavor that you say this own Just do what you wanna do Just do what you wanna do Just do what you want Thank you. 
Yes, uh, like already like you can hear this tune has got like a little bit more of a, a, mi a mix to it, like it's a little bit more organised. Yeah. And in fact, I think uh, when did we do, we did we did we, did we mix this last week? Was it last week that we mm -hmm. did it? I think so. We were sort of trawling through, we were getting ready to do this show, and I was like, okay, yeah, well, there's this song and there's this song. Oh, hold on, we didn't actually mix this tune. Let's 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 do that. And. Uh, now, now the reason why this was an interesting tune to to play to you guys is because it is a, a prime example of a tune that needs uh, a, a collaborate collaboration. So so like you know I made this beat uh, and I'm trying to make a, a sort of like a beat that you know it's to a click to beat. Yeah yeah but to a click track but that sounds completely like organic and loose and non-repetitive even though we we're playing the same thing over and over and uh so yeah it ended up sounding very wonky and weird and if you go back and you know watch that stream like you'll, you'll see me behind the drum kit kind of wobbling around trying to get a wobbly beat going uh but um um you know i, I sort of did like a freestyle on top of it and uh like immediately i was like oh man that's that's some really awful rapping like no <laughs> yeah and then you know and all the way through the stream like playing it back and you know and mixing and, and i'm like oh man that's just so awful and then i thought to myself you know i need to just need to get rid of that and you know and then i thought well no, there we go if it's empty then i should probably get somebody else to rap instead so we went back and must we're mixing the tune we chopped out the two verses that weren't as good as the middle verse. The middle verse sounds all right. So I like keep the middle verse, and then we now can farm out this tune to other talent, and then they can uh, uh, put their shine to it and to give take it into a different direction. So that's the plan with that with that song. It's certainly an interesting track and a complete contrast to the vibes of the disco track, right? Oh God, yeah. We're not even in the same ballpark in. Yeah atmosphere it's much more laid back for one there we go and speaking of changing the vibe should we uh move on to the next uh well i mean let's talk a little bit more about this track just go in on. terms of because like like i say we did actually mix this track and i mean do you, do you you know have you still got like any memories of uh what we did uh in uh when we were mixing this track i mean you were mentioning like like detuning the drum kit i remember what we did we did tune up this like we did a like a, a pitch shift on the snare yeah. in this one. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and um, yeah, just placing different uh, verbs on the various elements. So the backing vocals got a different verb to your main vocal, and um, the snare got a different verb again. So each time you're triggering these reverbs you're creating textures and space and so if you have several it becomes more realistic because you, you've got more than one texture going on um so we, we just tried to be relatively subtle in that one and some of the tracks that hopefully we'll listen to in a bit we're, we're far more obvious because it's a very interesting tale sometimes on a on a verb oh no absolutely like there's I mean, in this one, we were trying to get go for a, a kind of drier sound anyway. That's right, yeah. But uh, so there's only really tails on the vocal uh, and the other sounds have got more modulation happening on them rather than, uh, uh, rather than you know, like loads well, of... One of the interesting aspects of it is the space in, in there that uh, obviously a, a kind of rock or electronica doesn't necessarily have because you're, you know, thrashing around a maximum volume and mm. long sustained notes whereas here there's a lot of staccato and interlocking instrumentation where one thing will stop while another continues or plays a flourish and it just lands in the space and that's really interesting for the ear yeah and in fact uh, if i remember correctly i did we did some weird gating with that 
to yep. in order to actually reduce because because when I did the keyboard, I was I was be, being very like uh, uh, what, what's the, what's the word? Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the the right the right word for this. So, uh, Strict. No, not necessarily because like I had a riff and then I'm, instead of playing the riff correctly, I was sort of playing extra notes on top of that and being kind of messy with it mm. like so again like doing the wobbly thing and 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 purposefully to try and make variation happen around this riff and in order to kind of tighten it back up again i think what we did was uh, uh we 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 made the bass gate the keyboard so that it would kind of chop off the extraneous bits and make right, it more yeah, rhythmical yeah. and yeah. give it that, give it extra bit of space yeah, and the kit was gated as well. Wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, and um, okay. and then we we got we got into some nice modulation when we were mixing uh, last week. The, discovered some cool uh, phaser and uh, mm. and what was the other one? I forgot now what it was called. Uh, rotary. I think we used like a rotary thing and uh, yeah, shimmer. And was the, one, was a good one, wasn't it? And the shimmer verb that we were yeah. using, uh, which is we've been getting into as we've been trying to not use black hole on every track. <laughs> okay. Oh no way! Even even Tyler actually, you know, they they gave me more than one verb. So like, okay, we don't always have to use the black hole. Can, I know, and I get uh, a feeling we've only scratched the surface. Oh it, god, it's <laughs> just it's just every time it's like a bottomless pit of verb. But uh, but yeah, so like you know, again, like in the case of this one, this is a tune that's had a had a mix done to it, but. Uh, uh, the, but it, it's in need of a of a of a collaboration of a of a talent, you know, of, of somebody else to come and put their stamp on it, to take it to the level where it can then go out, you know, be ready to for release. So it's not an immediate release, again, you know. And this one is definitely one where you'd be like, hey, check this out. If you like this beat, maybe consider putting some stuff on it or, or collaboration, you know, da, da, da. and. Uh, and and yeah, and that's some, something that you should consider doing. Don't always, you know, be restricted to just making s tunes in your bedroom. Uh, the, you know, throw some stuff out there and see if anybody else is, you know, in the same headspace as you and be like, oh, actually, this, you know, these beats are really dope. Uh, I remember it happened to a friend of mine, you know, and it was this guy called him up and said, I heard your beats and I think they're the best. I'm coming from New York to London and I want to record an album. And that guy had just finished doing an album with, um, uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, um, what's the thing of me, Mouse? Uh, something Mouse? I can't remember his name. Though. Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Danger Mouse. He just finished doing an album with Danger Mouse. So my friend was like, what? And, you know, and it's like, yeah, just because he threw his, you know, he threw his music out there. He made a tape and... Um, and he and uh, a friend of his who was also another producer like oh I like that tape can I can I nick it you know and he's like yeah sure man you know and if you know any rappers just play them the tape and you know because you know I need I need some input I can just making beats here in the corner but you know I want to produce uh, you know actual tunes and uh, that's the person he got back was uh, Gemini uh, he's an infamous New York rapper and they did a whole bunch of tunes together. <laughs> Which I was lucky to uh, do some uh, do some sessioning on, which was great. We did uh, we did a version of like Anita's Baker Anita Baker's um, Been So Long, so I got to lay down that infamous Jimmy Haslip bassline. It just so happened that it was a bassline of my youth. I was like, oh yeah, I need to learn this bassline. It's so hip. And then you know who would have thunk it that. Years later, in this small studio in London, they'd be like, "Hey, could you replay this bass slide? I don't know whether you know it." And I'm like, "Oh my god, I totally know this bass slide. I learned it when I was 16. Awesome." Hmm. So yeah, so you know, and uh, we did a bunch of other tunes as well. So it's really, you know, it's an obscure project. I don't know whether it ever ended up coming out. I think maybe maybe a single might have dropped of it, but uh, but yeah, but the, just just to give you an example of like you know don't just keep your music to yourself like throw it out there because you there might be someone who will become really passionate about it and uh and and you know will end up being a someone that you work with uh, you know so yeah so what have we got what's next 
Well, how about Soul Food? Cool. This is one of my favorite tunes, this one. And you guys will see why immediately once you, once you hear it. Should we crack straight in? Yeah, yeah, let's go straight into it. WIP, you know we. This is how we do. Some of that guitar and I put some bass on at the bar and I get another drink and I think yes you know we're going hard till we're throwing up in the sink. But in the end we're gonna get hot just like it was summer Mm-hmm. 
people in the chat or is it just people lurking it's all good so yeah so i mean like uh, the reason why this is one of my favorite tracks is because i feel like uh, it, it it kind of marked a turning point in just like the process of uh, of laying down tracks where i a lot of the time i'm very much into like uh, setting up restrictions when I, you know, when I come in, I'll, I'll make some like immediate decisions. Okay, we're going to do this, and therefore, we can't do this and that, th these other things. We can only do this. And uh, this was one of the first times where I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to disallow anything. It's going to be more of a yes session. <laughs> And and it ended up being re really entertaining. I, I I just found it to be like, you know, that that sensation when you when you're in the studio making music and you're just having a good time. And mm. and that, and, and then it's really groovy, isn't it? As well. Well, I mean, it, it translates to the song. Like yeah, you can yeah. hear it's bouncy yeah. and and light. And then there's and then there's a lot in there. Like if you were to sit down and sort of you know yeah. listen to bits. And one of the main things, which is something. You, in theory, you should never do is you should never noodle uh, in in your rhythm guitar tracks. Like rhythm guitar should be solid, and and, and I mean, obviously, like if you go back and listen to classic recordings of certain eras, that's not at all the case. Like you know, it's low in the mix, and there's people just noodling to their heart's content. But because it's low in the mix, you don't notice it. But here. I, I, you know, my first impulse was to be like, okay, I've got the riff, we'll run the riff, I'll record it twice, you know, in stereo, and it will be, you know, nice and tight and sound fat. And then I was like, you know what, actually, no, I'm just going to, because we, plus we were recording, you know, uh, through an amp as well, so we're using mics. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I'm actually just going to vibe the track and, and, and not restrict myself to just playing the riff and uh, actually see how many crazy licks I can fit into this one tune. So every time round, if you listen to the rhythm guitar, you can hear me trying to fit another crazy lick in and just seeing how, how you know, just how, you know, outrageous I could be with these licks as we were going, as the track was going on. And then on top of that, like, okay, now we'll put the actual solo guitar <laughs> on top of all of it. And then we managed to, to create this really like, I would say like Isley Brothers style, uh, again with some really cool modulation. Like you know, we've been getting into these not really nice uh, modulation plugins and uh, managed to get the craziest sound. Like the, I think because because we gated it as well, so it ends up having this really strange like you know the attack of the guitar. The solo guitar goes really weird at certain points because of the way the the modulation is filling it, and uh, and so it ends up going yup 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 like that, which is crazy. You know? It's absolutely crazy. I spent hours trying to actually play that, and without realizing that it's just the, the effect. It's not <laughs> <laughs> with the volume on your guitar. Like I can't yup yup yup. It's like no man. It's just it was a random like side effect of the gate that made it sound that way. So so yeah so this is really like a a tune where I was going against the rules of sessioning. In a session, less is more. Um, you you need to be restrained uh, uh, in your choices and and so on uh, because you don't want you know you're not the necessarily the centre of the track. It's usually that the, this is going to be a singer or a soloist or whatever. So you want all of your instruments to be nice and tight. And in the end, what we did is the only thing that's really tight is the drums. The drums are absolutely solid to a click track. I, I, and I just played the same thing all the way through without any deviation. But then everything else is just, you know, I'm, I'm really just going crazy with it. I'm not playing, not being tight at all. 
so I guess in a way it kind of resembles that hip hop track. It's got the similar, except with the hip hop track, we were like everything is, you know, out of kilter. But here, the the drums are absolutely solid, really, and it's a, it was a good solid take as well. Mm. And we put some crazy, like effects on it as well, and made it all spaced out but compressed, so it's kind of pumping. It's making the whole track pump, you know, as a result. That massive verb we put on it. And I can't remember what we put on the bass, but it's interesting because like the bass has got some severe bottom, but then it's totally clear in the, in the upper register. So whenever I'm doing a lick in the bass, you can hear it. It's clear as day. It's, you know, sometimes when you EQ a bass, you end up losing the top. Here we managed to get the the, the best of both worlds. I mean, I I was playing a mute, like I was muting the bass like physically to give it a more like a thumpy sound. And um, but yeah, like it's, it's definitely like a cool tune. Mm. You have any remarks about what we were doing engineering-wise on that, Alex? Um, uh, on this last track. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were definitely playing around with the uh, Eventides, and what what I thought was really fun was we were getting something that sounded like it could fit in a drum and bass track, basically. Uh, and then toning it down so you can only just perceive it. And if you muted it, you missed it because it's not there anymore. But when it is there, it's subtle and not overpowering the original notes played. So I thought that was quite fun because if you're listening with a nice pair of headphones and obviously if that track gets properly mixed and mastered, that they'll bring out those low volume details and certainly um this it's got a great stereo stereo imagery around all of that stuff so yeah f from that point of view it, it's nice to have something in there that's unusual yeah there's a lot of um like i say like we we did a lot of spatial stuff that's uh, right yeah, uh, the, yeah. but then we you know we then we put it all the way in the back of the mix that's right yeah and um, and also, like I said, because we everything is in this tune it was recorded with mics. Mm. There's a certain amount of room uh, roominess that's in there, on you know. So even though we've got these crazy sort of more spaced out effects that we threw on afterwards, yeah. I mean, all the sounds are real to start yeah, with. Yeah, this yeah. Is the thing, isn't it, compared to let's say a VSTI where you're just generating sounds from algorithms that never existed, but you know, prior to that synthesis and they've never left the box, as it were. Whereas here we're doing the opposite, we're capturing real world sounds and then putting ethereal stuff on it afterwards. Which is, you know, kind of interesting. And uh, like I say, I'm, I'm you know, lucky enough to have a, a room that's not, you know, too painful sound-wise. It's It's got a certain, you know, verb to it. It's quite a large room, but the verb is, is not, like artistically detrimental to to the music itself so even though we 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 did have to do a bit of uh you know uh, what they like to call destructive eqing where we took some frequencies out yeah. we didn't have to do that much of it because everything already had a quite a sweet sound to begin with it drums sound pretty nice in this room and and the guitar sounded awesome i mean you know mm. we immediately got a great guitar sound and yeah. very excited Straight away, you know. Yeah, nice tone, yeah. I forgot, but I think I was using the, uh, uh, what did I use? I I used two guitars, and I used the SG, and then I used the uh, the GM, and I used the, 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 the Guillaume Massey uh, um, Slimline, which is, you know, but it's actually back with Guillaume Massey. Guillaume Massey took it to give it some love, you know, before the season starts. And um, change the strings and all of that good stuff, and uh, and so I'll be getting it back hopefully next week. I don't know whether I'm gonna have time to get it back this week, but yeah. So we had the we had the slimline in there, and then we I think we used uh, uh, Franz SG for like the the solo guitar. I'm not quite sure. And then then I did we use the 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 the, the Stratocaster? I can't remember. I think we might have done. I can't precisely remember it now. No, no. See, this is the thing. We've got multiple guitars. 
and then it starts to get a bit like gray area like as to what what we used you'd have to you have to watch the stream I, I don't know whether i think it might be one of the ones that disappeared but it might we might it might still be on youtube that one i don't know anyhow um do we have any other tracks uh we got other tracks from previous sessions yeah let's have a let's have a listen uh Now this one is one that's actually available that you can listen to uh, on Deezer and on Spotify. love that last lick that that's such a crazy lick it's a very smooth track that one i like the mix on it it's very clear well, you, isn't it Everything well you can hear that that one's done you yeah. can hear that that's a finished tune certainly and it's very slick and you've got the start the the keyboard stylings of uh, uh of daniel clifford in the background on the fender roads yeah that was styler yeah uh, and um and uh and yeah and just just we, we, it was what we did is in the first sessions when we first started doing the stream, I did a whole session of just playing drums. And so we had a bunch of like drum takes and just grooves, not like, you know, not a whole take, just uh, I just play one groove, then I play a different groove, then play a different groove. And so a whole bunch of grooves that we could just jump into and loop up and then make beats with. And so that's one of those drum grooves that we took and looped up. And uh, in a really haphazard way, like because uh, when we started out, but it was we were using this new version of, of Pro Tools that nobody knew how to use, so we didn't even know how to loop on it. So we did like cut and paste. So we cut and paste the whole thing, and there's even like there's rhythmical inconsistencies in this loop because so it's not so it sounds live even though it's not because we just looped it badly. And then, <laughs> and then, on, then on top of that, we came back and then laid up like bass 
and key like the keys is a loop as well that we just looped up and then uh and then for the rest of the track we made it so it kind of kept on changing and never went back which was kind of a bit of a, a thematic of the first tunes that we did with work in progress where it, it, it never goes back it doesn't like you know there'll be like a chorus then a verse and then a, a solo and then and then we're out rather than you know verse chorus verse chorus but you know and things yeah. like that so like strange well, part, form. part part of that is is um apart from the stylistic side of it is the time restraint yeah for sure for sure i mean but also like you know is that that's the other thing that if you guys have tuned in before you'll realize that all of these tracks are from a couple of hours recording and maybe an hour's mixing if that so you know you're hearing pretty raw apart from the last one which is to me pointed out has been finished and uh mastered as well or yeah yeah, yeah it, it, it went well. through yeah, yeah it went through uh like three three la three layers we did a rough mm. like with the me and, me and daniel we did like the rough version of it where we just had the, the loops and we made all the parts and then uh but you came in and then i i laid the vocals and the, the the extra guitar the solo guitar on top yeah and uh and then we mixed the track and then uh we mastered it over at yours yeah, and uh, and so it's done. Yeah, and then, then then that's what it sounds like, and it sounds pretty slick. It, sounds it does sound slick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very well balanced. Mm. Okay, and then the next one on the list uh, is a drum and bass. Track. I've been I've been waiting for this one because it's yeah. been a while since we've heard it, and it's we did a lot of editing on this, so yeah i'm curious to hear what it sounds like now again you know it, it's completely different texture tempo attitude so it's it's nice it adds to the complete diversity of your stuff here indeed All right let's have a listen let's go a bit of silence so here we go check check the microphone I've seen Scruffy D is going to take it home. You know what time it is? Listen, it's time we get serious. You know we get serious. It's just the That's best right. wide cymbal sound of all time. Listen, we get serious. Right? We get serious. Time to get serious. Ooh. Oh, it's time to get serious. 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 It's time to get serious. Oh my gosh! It's time to get serious. Wicked sound. It's time to get serious. What? It's time to get serious. Oh my gosh, oh my days. Oh. Get serious. It's time to get serious. Listen. It's time to get serious. Oh, yeah. Like what? This is how we do it when we're on the spot. Some MCs have it, others have not. Some MCs want to do, others cannot. I be the Scruffy D, yeah, you know me. The MC that likes to fly free over beats. It's easy for me to do this. That's why I drop the float like a Buddhist. I meditate over track. Now you react. 
when I come through and straight attack. No tick tick tack, even though I'm fresh. That's how I like to drop it, cause I know how to mesh. The lyric and the verb, yes the absurd. Fly free like a bird, when I improvise. Check out the flavor as I fly, through the air, sit throughout its space. Smile on my face, face. like what? To get serious, you know it's time to get what? It's time to get serious. Well, well, come on. It's time to get serious. You know why. It's time to get serious. Straight, straight, diggity, diggity, drop, drop the drunken sound. That's how we lock it like a flavor when we go around. Understand the flavor with the money, yes. One pound, two pounds. Then we rip it up and the sound like. Can you check it? Diggity, diggity, check it when we trick, come and wreck it. Riggity, riggity, wreck it, cause you like to wiggle when we be wiggling our wig. That's how we drop it when we take you a big or frig. Frig is big, that's what I meant to say. Till the lyrical display of the MC's insane. That's how I drop it, got words for days. Other people wanna check out when they sit and play. But I move ahead, yes, my flow be dread. I like to drop runs instead of sitting around. Cause that's not the way that I like to spend my time I prefer to lean, I prefer to drop the noun That's what I straight this down When I drop it, I bound Just like a jump You wanna start the pump I be in the front You be behind You will find the supply When you check my rhyme That's how I like to do Do, 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 do it Straight, straight, come through it Then you realize that I straight, straight knew it From the beginning to the end, my friend Cause you know what time it is what time is it? What time is it? I'll tell you that. It's time to get serious. What? It's time to get serious. What? It's time to get serious. Check it. It's time to get serious. Oh my gosh. Oh my days. Come through the club, leave it ablaze. Oh my gosh, oh my days. Come through to the club, leave it ablaze. Oh my gosh, oh my days. Come through to the club, leave the whole place ablaze. Oh my gosh, oh my days. Come through to the club, club, club. Radio bomb, I think we killed it. <laughs> Once again, in the place. It's Winston. Live and direct. You know we got serious here. Big tune, big sound. Absolutely wicked. Y'all don't know. Picking up the open bass massive inside. Yes, yes, yes. Picking up brother man. And social audio crew, crew, crew. DJ Jama. Damn, damn, son. There's some crazy ambient noises in that. Yeah, that was those um, cool uh, mini um The mini synths. Mini synths, yeah. 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 They're fun, though. They're a lot of fun. No, no, it's great. And it creates some really cool soundscapes in there. Yeah, because you can't tempo sync them. You just got to do it all by ear and... <laughs> press it open it's <laughs> sinking up that was a perform. it's a performance and what's interesting is like so we did like a drum and bass tune but with all live performance so it's like live yeah. drums yeah real double bass yeah. and like the the, the cork micro synths yeah. you can only use them with your fingers there's yeah. no other there's no keyboard it's entirely like there's just a, like an expression pad. There's a, it's a ribbon yeah, controller. Yeah, strip. and you just have to yeah. go for it. And so it was, you know, pure, you know, pure fun jazz, like <laughs> the jazz approach. So, you know, thinking about it now, listening back to that, I think we missed a trick by not putting in heavily distorted guitars in there. <laughs> 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 I know the the original thing was yeah yeah Ronnie size jungle but still <laughs> you know <laughs> bit of shredding in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice one, Jem. Thank thank you for the 
Thank you for the message and chat. Big up to the Gemma. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I I am from South London. Yes, indeed. I was born in St Thomas's Hospital in Waterloo. So I am South South London Massive. South South South, mate. So bigging up the South London Massive and the uh, and the whole drum and bass uh, crew that I used to work with back in the day. Um, the DJ Running Man and the Unsocial Audio Crew and uh, DJ Jammer. And uh, on of, of course the people from uh, London Live and Direct, which was the first internet urban music radio station from London. And uh, yeah, and we did like one of the first ever streamed uh, rave parties, and we did it in Mass, which was a massive club in London where it was a converted church, and uh, in Brixton. And uh, and it was so funny because you know you have this idea like the, the you know the TV idea of what a, what a computer nerd looks like, yeah. and uh, there was a pre-production meeting before the night started where the guys that were organising it got the tech crew together, and they looked straight out of a TV show. There was like super duper pale guys wearing cardigans with glasses. And just a bunch of them, like one guy's su super overweight, another guy who's like tiny, really thin, with like you know like dirty hair, and then this next guy. They just they look like complete, like massive computer nerds. It was crazy, and I and I always thought that you know it was a cliche and that people didn't actually look like that, but sure enough, and these guys bought in a ton of computers. And they set up behind us, you know, us ravers, you know, who just had the decks and the mics, and and they like, and they were like, look, you know, we'll take care of it. And you know, the guy was like, listen, you know, the stream has to keep on going; it can't drop out. You know, how long is this rave going on for? Twelve hours. It's like what? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like yes, you've got to go keep on going for twelve hours. <laughs> and they did it, man. And whilst I remember, like, I was emceeing for what was it DJ Skrill? And DJ Flash, these guys are like happy hardcore DJs from like back in the day. And as I was doing it, the guy, the the computer guy who was behind me would tell me when people were dropping comments from around the world. So I'd say to the, and you know, in front of me, there's, you know, the dance floor with all the, you know, the London people who are there raving out and everything. And every so often I'd be like, yo, you're getting big ups from Brazil and da, da, da. And, and then the audience would go nuts. They'd be like, oh, this is crazy. Like there's people watching us from all over the world. And, you know, and so they were being, you know, being watched, they were raving out and being watched by, you know, people into drum and bass and, and jungle and uh, hard hardcore from around the world. It was a crazy event. Mm. Yes. Yes, when we were young, you know, you yeah. young, you youngins of today don't understand the meaning of partying. You don't even comprehend it. You're like, oh my God, I got drunk yesterday. Oh, it's like, dude, like we had parties that were gone for days to just keep on going. I mean, you know, like with Gabe, man, we did it for three years. Just, <laughs> just kept on going. <laughs> you know, you wake up. And uh, get on the machines, good. make tunes, go out, get slaughtered, come back, make more tunes, pass out, wake up, and repeat, <laughs> rinse, repeat. And we did it for three years nonstop. Every day the same. It was crazy. I'm glad we stopped. It was, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was. What was it? The the credo of IQ was, uh, was it, play hard, work hard, die hard. That's that was our credo. <laughs> So it was pretty, pretty harsh. But uh, but yeah, no, it was, you know, like that time was a really fascinating time. And the fact that the technology had just come about to the point where you could actually even comprehend the concept of streaming. Because this is way back in the day, man. Like, you know, you guys now think streaming is, oh, we know streaming is the latest thing. It's like, no, no, this is, oh man, I can't even think of when it was. It's like, end of the 90s beginning of the 2000s or something like that it's yeah, old, it's early old, days for old. streaming isn't it yeah yeah man so you know and uh, now if you look up london live and direct you get a little like factoid about what that was because it doesn't exist anymore you know 
but uh, it had a whole bunch of DJs that went on to do other things and uh, some of, some of which went on to you know national radio and stuff like that because it was a really happening scene and it was interesting it was, like, it was in this weird complex in the middle of South London somewhere and uh, like just around the corner from it was a guy that was making hip hop it was a, like an obscure underground hip hop producer and I managed to get a couple of records off him of you know he's like yeah check this out and the dude kept on handing me these amazing tunes. Like, I mean, like, like dude, you're making like the dopest hip hop, like, you know, London hip hop, but like, how come nobody knows you? And he's like, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, it's because I'm, you know, because he, he was African. And so he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm African. I'm not actually from London. I'm from, I don't know, I can't remember. It was, it was either Cameroon or Nigeria, I can't remember. But he was like, you know, I'm trying to get in the scene and I just can't get in the scene, you know. So even though I'm making these records and, pressing this vinyl and you know so it was you know it was an interesting time like there was lots of people really doing stuff at, like from pure passion you know with very little money involved unfortunately it, it was always the thing that would annoy us you know with uh, doing London Live and directors you know we're there every week for hours and um, you know we had MC Melody come down we had all different you know special guests come and and, and do the show with us but you know, sometimes we had to like borrow money to get petrol to get there and get back. And we kind of, it was depressing in a way because we were like, man, we're doing this. We don't even know if anybody's even hearing it because this is on the internet. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. When, um, when I was doing the pirate radio, we at least had a uh, phone in on the pages and uh, you get the... 10th guy to phone in gets a mixtape or whatever so you encourage people to phone up you know and get that audience participation you know people are listening out there well i mean and one uh, of the cool things that we had was we had the webcam that, that was on like us behind the decks and uh, in the chat people would comment like oh what are you wearing da, da, da. and i remember it, there was this one thing that became a bit of a thing in between me and Jammer was the code load there was this guy in the chat called code load and he kept on asking for the rewind right and 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 so we're like it was at a time when a lot andy c was dropping this like these classic tunes he dropped this one tune which was like uh it had like this he he was like one of the first people to do like the swing beat you know and i forgot what it's called body rock i think it was called the tune and so it had like a swing beat like to Cat, do to cat, do to cat, do to cat, like that. And people were losing their shit over this tune. They were like, they'd never heard anything like that before. They're like, what is this? And so we played, we dropped it, you know. And this guy, Code Load, was in Canada. And he was like, what the F is this tune? Like, what is this tune? I've never heard anything like it. I'm like, yeah, it's London, man. Get ready. This is UK sound, you know. And so he's like, reload, reload. And so. When he reload, when we reloaded the track, I started because I was emceeing. I started going to C, the O, the D, E, load, the C, the O, the D, E, load, and we put our our, our t-shirts over our heads because we were losing it, right? And we were jumping around, you know, and it became a thing. It became a thing afterwards in between, like me and DJ Jamo, like, where we 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 call back to the C, the, the, the code load, man, the C. The D, the D, E, load, the C, the O, the D, E, load. So, I mean, like, even though, like I say, like, we had our, our times where we were like, is anybody even checking this out? But there were times where we were like, this is crazy. Like, there are people from all over the world that are tuning into this and being blown away by the, U the UK, the London scene, and hearing this music that they'd never heard before. And it was just, do you know what I mean? Blowing their minds, you know? Yeah. And that was a great feeling, even, like I say, even though we weren't. We weren't getting paid. <laughs> Which we would say to the guy that ran the, ran the radio station, like, dude, come yeah. on. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. That's often the case. Uh, that's okay. But yeah, the, the, the night that we did that was uh, that was uh, streamed, it was called uh, Legends of the Dark Black and on social audio. Nice. Yes. It was. It was crazy. Righty. Well, tracks-wise, uh, we haven't listened to Jiggle My Rig yet. 
Oh, well, I mentioned that one earlier on. You this did mention it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shall we play it? Let's have a listen to this. This is another one that you can listen to uh, uh, on Spotify and all the rest that's been released already. rappers so they can get their rap on drum sound is saying don't they yeah well I mean we, it, it, it's interesting because like, like like DB's got a very interesting approach to to mixing he, he, he sees every element of of like his recorded tracks as separate tracks that he can affect however he wants rather than oh this is the kick drum mic so it has to be mixed this way and oh this is the snare so it has to be mixed he'd be like yeah no but no this is just another track of sounds that I can do whatever with and so he, he never never gates anything and he, and he likes to like he'll, he'll put a lot of like he'd be very brutal with with compression and, and effects just to create a texture rather than be stuck on I have to get this drum sound and be just be like oh and fuck it I'll just so we like we had like some like auto wah flange or some, something on like yeah. one overhead and then on the snare we had like something else stupid and on the, 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 the kick mic we, we like just yeah, put something else on it and so on and you can hear it and I mean we, and this is a loop so like this is a, this is, uh, 
similar to the, the previous, uh, the other tune that was released, except that this one was, I think, uh, I can't remember if it was a drum group that, that Daniel, because Daniel also did a session of just playing drum bands. So I had a bunch of Daniel drum breaks that I could uh, loop up. So you can see how messed up that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Okay, I think you can probably stop it now. Because I think it will just it will just keep on going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the loop. We did not not quite sure how long this tune is gonna be. Let's just loop it for like fifty times. Yeah, and I'm not sure if this is a track or just let's play this quietly. By the way, if anybody that's watching wants a copy of the song, just to you know DM me on Instagram. It's me talking in the background. Yeah. We're checking to see whether this is an, an actual track. Possibly not a person I've already started. It might be it might be the, the drums. Yeah, these are all the different drum loops yeah. that we made into like. Yeah, I've got all know. the loops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some but there's um, there was the track that we did the, uh, last week. Oh, we have a request: the Detroit house track. Uh, when was that? I think it's like. Um, that wasn't the MPC track, was it? Uh, no, it wasn't the MPC track. No, it's it's after that. It's after the MPC track. I think we used. We used the uh, we used the keyboard, like we used the keyboard sound, and we used that little drum machine, the, the VST, didn't we? Uh, yeah. So we did actually use kind of drum machine noises. So that was relatively recent. Um, got to open up Pro Tools. Was it the week before last? No, it's way before that. Way before, before that. that. Yeah, it's like I don't. I don't know if it. I, no, I don't think so. Um, Detroit House. I don't, did we do it before Christmas? I don't think so. I know we did the, we did the uh, that that funk disco thing before Christmas, but I don't know. drum machine a go go. That sounds. It could be that though. There is. Well, I did. I did the. We haven't got a bounce file, but we've got the session. And I'll open it. Let's have a look. I think that might be because I also we also did a session where uh, I kind of just played in drum machines when you brought the, your drum machines over with you, yeah. didn't you? So that could be that session. I think so. it is that, yeah. So that's probably not the one. Oh, <laughs> it's just opening now in Pro Tools. So. But uh, yeah, the Detroit House one that was that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good tune with the uh, lyrics from Anna. So yeah, I mean, e each of the tracks so far has been completely different, which is really nice. As I'm sure those who are listening can find out for themselves, but um, uh, I think that's that's part of the strength of this material is that you know it's not the same every week; it's completely different every week. But also, I I just like the idea of in in this kind of world of like. Uh, filtered photographs and heavily produced tunes and super duper effect movies and where everything is bigger than life and uh, super duper cleaned up and and auto tuned and times you know stamped and all of this 
to just actually be able to throw down. Oh, this is one I did uh, before we did games one. But you could you could probably release a single with this on one side and games one on the other because they're both like super space tunes. the name of this of the drum machine was it the groove uh, drum computer drum uh, computer yeah that's the one the German So yeah, we have be looking for. So so it was a session that we did in March. That was the Detroit one. Does anybody recognise the theme in this? No, this is uh, close encounters of the third kind. Do 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 do. But then I just changed it so that we didn't get like DMCA, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> so not that one. Then. <laughs> no, no, that's definitely not the Detroit house tune. I think we can all agree that that's not it. That's still the chief, yeah. What time is it? It is ten thirty-five. So we still got a little bit of time, so we can uh, have a little search for this Detroit. Uh, house tune see if we can find it inside of the box and play it for you because that is just true it's another uh, favourite we did a great session where we were like there was a big revival of like 90s sounds like people were like oh yeah the, the good old 90s piano ding 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 you know that, all of that stuff mm. and so I was like wouldn't it be funny if we if we did the 90s, and it's actually called that, if you, like you, certain keyboards and uh, like sound banks, it's actually called 90s piano. It's an oh. actual sound. 
We've got Melody Beautiful as well. Oh, Melody Beautiful is a great tune. Yeah. Isn't that the one with beatboxing? <laughs> Yeah, so that was a, that was a, a, like a stream challenge. We we basically said to people in, uh, I think we did Instagram or whatever on Facebook. We're like, look, we're going to do a, a session, but we're only going to use one thing. So you have a choice: either we're just going to use guitar, or we're just going to use bass, or we're just going to use vocals. And uh, people chose vocals. So I came in and we just did a whole track just using vocals and we also used it as an opportunity to test out this pedal that we were uh, lent at the time that was specifically for vocalists. Mm. And we all agreed that the pedal was garbage. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> and it just made life hard for us really. It didn't really make it, you know, it didn't uh, do no, anything No, it wasn't cool. a quick fix or a magic wand, was it? No, it was, you know, it, 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 the effects were a bit lame and so as a result, when we mixed the track, we had to do a lot of correction in order to get things to sound halfway decent. Hmm. But it's the, not bad though, considering it's all beatboxing. Well, it, it made it so that there's some really original, like soundscapes, hmm. you know, and filthiness going on there, and pitch shifting, and uh, you know, and end up being quite a cool little track in the end. Yep. So. There's another one that's in the same folder. I don't know what it is called. Butterfly emoji. Does that ring a bell? Butterfly emoji. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's the same track. Okay, that's what cool. it is. It's the same track. Right. But like I think the initial mix of it. Right. Okay. So what we're looking for is the. We're looking for a track in March. That's uh uh. Before March, it could be before March. Like, so what's what's January February? So February. No. What was it? Hip hop? No, uh, Detroit, Detroit uh, House. Um, I I just remember it having uh, like these chords, and it's like a do, and the begin the begin was like ding 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 ding. It's not the NPC one, no. No, no, it's not an NPC. It's we used we used the VST like drum machine, and then we added um, like the keyboard drums to it. I added like an extra kick and and uh, just to give it that kind of meaty Detroity sort of sound and a little hand cap. Let's see. I'll do a quick search.
but I don't know. I'm trying to think. Did we, did we give it a name? Something to do with like move your body or yeah. her body in it. shake your body or wash your body. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, we we all had dreams of like. W wealth and champagne after making this track we were like this is it this is the one but I think Alex has actually forgot to save it and so it doesn't exist anymore uh, well you may laugh but I can't find it uh, so it's not a body um, house I don't think gives us anything no no, I think it, it's very possible it could be one of those no, ones. On. Detroit Housewives movie skit. Let's get some info on that. But that was definitely like a bit of the the actual, a bit of the actual stream. So that was 14th of March. That could be so very... We've got the house okay, skit. It then, so I'm not sure. So it, it, it's probably something that we did during March, I feel. Because it was definitely like a, could be a candidate for summer. Let's do what you want. WIP. So it's not this one, though. No, no, no. Yeah, that one's more recent. That's like from a couple of weeks ago, that one. Is it's possible? I don't. I don't think there's um, an actual mix that was done on ah, it. That's so why, that's why then. So it, it's 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 just the you have to, it's a, it's a file. file. Yeah, yeah. There's no. We didn't. We didn't do a print of it. Okay. Because um. we haven't we haven't mixed it yet. I was hoping to I was hoping to to get a special guest uh, to get Martin to come in. Because it was a house tune and he was a house producer, to get him to come and give us the the house knowledge whilst we mixed it, rather than just us mixing it, like get some of those dope house tricks. But we you know just scheduling, scheduling. So it wasn't a tenth of. Doop, doop, it looks like we're not going to be able to play it for you, folks. I don't think we can. Sorry about that. We can find it in the uh, in the box, but uh, like I say, you know, hopefully with uh, if I can get the scheduling right, I'll be able to get mine to come in and uh, and we'll have a, like a an actual house producer's take on on how to mix that track. So that's why I've been holding out on, on doing a mix of it, but specifically for that reason. So I wanna, wanted to troll Martin LaSalle's brain and find out like, okay, so what did you guys used to do back in the day? Like, what type of uh, approach do you have to kicks and, and vocals and, and so on? Yeah, sorry, I'm not finding it. Let me. Well, never mind. Like I say, we'll, you know, we will hear of that song again, but because uh, uh, we still have to mix it. But um, yeah, they're not getting out of the house or the date. Thirty-first of March. No. 
Yeah, that seems a bit late in the in the month, doesn't it? Yeah, right. Well, I mean, uh, I think we'd probably play like one more to take us out. How about the one we did last week? Which was actually not last week, the week before. Was it the week before? Was it the the one uh, the uh, Super Mario one? Yeah, it's the week before. Week before last, not last week. Um. Okay. Uh, what's it called? What the hell was it called? I don't know whether we even gave it an actual name. Did you call it like Super Mario or something? Okay, we we'll saw our Pro Tools and get a recent file off that then. Yeah, I don't think we d I don't think we did a print of it. I think it's just it's just a, a Pro Tools file. Okay, so thirty first of March, no. Uh it would be where are we now? We're like June. We're sixteenth of June, yeah. yeah. So, so at the end of May. So it would be May. Yeah, end of May, like end of May, beginning of June. End of May, okay. Yes, I think so. Yeah, because it wasn't last week, it was the week before. Second of June? Second of June, yeah. That sounds reasonable. But basically what it was, was um, I had a touch of nostalgia about um, a, a concert that I did uh, at the Jazz Cafe many, many years ago that was uh, on MTV, Best of UK Rap. And uh, it was DJ Pogo had organised it. And it was uh, a concert which had... Um, Rodney P performing and also um, Estelle uh, performing as well. And uh, funnily enough, um, but just before I, I just before I went on stage to do that gig, after I uh, you know, come back came back in, um, uh, DJ Pogo introduced me to two uh, short really uh, happy black guys and, and I'm like who are these people and DJ Poe goes like hey this is Irvin Walden and um, Roy Ayers I was like what WIP you know we this is how we do so so that was 31st of March. So it'd be, yeah, so it'd be after that one. Right, okay. So. But, uh, but, but yeah, so before I came on stage, got to meet Roy S. Really nice guy. And absolute legend, Irvin Walden, who was in London because he was performing with Most Deaf. And um, halfway through the concert, Irvin Walden gets on stage and goes, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm here in London with uh, this guy, you might know him, he's called Most Deaf. And you can imagine, like, this is a hip-hop concert, people lost their minds. And he's like, is it okay if I play with the band? And everyone's like, oh my God, yeah, sure. And, uh, and then he turns to me, and he's a keyboard player, Irvin Walden. He's the infamous keyboard player from the 70s. Like, did a bunch of like classic, uh, esoteric, sort of zen-influenced, spaced-out jazz funk. And he was also the keyboard player that played with Roy Ayers a lot. And uh, with a couple of other really famous people of that era. Like, he was a very well-known... Uh, 
Sick. Yeah, it sounds great. So yeah, so that was one of the beats that we did on that night at the Jazz Cafe, which is the underground section of Super Mario Bros. Two. Do 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 be do be do do. And uh, and uh, yeah, so I just had a massive nostalgia kick, and I was like, let's just do that tune. But you know, it's one of those things where we were copying like 
you know, these guys that have obviously replayed the track, you know, to make a hip hop song out of it. And with all of those big samples that everyone's had the idea of like, oh, I'm going to sample that one day. Everyone has their take on it. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's like, yeah, but I would have sampled it differently and I would have done it differently. And so this was like a different take on it. Again, like slightly shifting it around and making it different rather than just having the exact riff. Yeah, you know? right. Well, the drums are banging in that, though. I really like the sound of the kit that's come across. Yeah, and everything sounds nice and fresh, doesn't it? It's all that's, nice uh, and yeah, clean. We did and spend a minute mixing it, didn't we? Well, I was because like the beat was pretty simple to do, so like I had the you know it wasn't you know just playing the same thing over and over, just doing different layers of it. And uh, but also the drum groove was interesting. We had an interesting discussion about it, like mm. whether it should be sixteenth notes That's or eighth right, notes. That's right. Because we got another drum take and we compared the two and preferred the first one. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do believe it really did. You know, it, it made it so that it was that space that's used up with all the effects afterwards. You know. And that's a tough kit right there, right? Yeah. Every drum groove. So that was the drums we went with, and as you were saying, there was the previous drum groove, uh, sorry, the second drum groove, which we decided not to go for. Which filled everything out a lot more. And also, it wasn't as good a take as well. I was like, yeah, I was a bit messy with it, yeah. And just more sense of space, man, makes it funkier. It's me, the Scruff for D. Mario, and when I come through, I avoid the turtle because I don't wanna go out like that. It's great news. Yeah, you don't find many rappers think how I wrote the turtle. Check it out. If you wanna get down and be a real devout off this beat, because you know I love it. We'll get you out the seat with the rhymes that you love it. I've had enough of it. I've had enough of that well shit. I want some dope shit. I hope you do too. So this is how we do. Come on, come on, people. Cause it's me, Scruffy D. We got a great guitar sound going on. You've been messing about with that VST Marshall amp plugin. Check it out. Crazy effect that you put on the on the, on the Fender Road sound it just immediately made it come alive. guitar players in the house. It's the verbs, man. 
And the way, because the, 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 the initial sounds are panned, it creates this weird movement. This one in particular. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? There's the other one. And that's just it's great, great. So they this is bought it, right? Yeah, I mean, if you if you, I mean, I'm liking that as a mix. It sounds yeah, pretty yeah. hip, but yeah, we yeah. should probably print it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's export it. Yeah, yeah, because it does sound pretty pretty nice. Uh, what do you want to call it? As date? It, it's me. It's me, Scruffy Lee. Well, because it, it's it's the you know for those uh, Super Mario heads, that's what he's going to. It's a me, Mario. Yeah, that's, that's where it comes from. Yeah. I thought I'd, you know, being on Twitch, I thought, why don't I just do some clickbait just for once? And, uh, yeah, just put Super Mario on the tag. That'll work, right? No, no, it's, it's, like I say, it's it's been in the back of my mind ever since I did that that concert. But, yeah, I mean, like, I'd, that bass line's so cool. You know, that, that diggy doogie diggy, I'd, I'd like yeah. it so much. You know, one day, one day, I mean, obviously now I can't sample it because they've already sampled it. And I can't do a live version because I'm doing the live version on MTV. So I'm going to have to leave it for a while and then come back to it at a later date. And here we are, like 20 years later. Oh, my God. Really? Is it that, has it been that long? Almost, twen- almost 20 <laughs> years later. Like, that's insane, man. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, and I just just re you know rejigged it, yeah. re, re refluted it, jiggled it. Yeah, jiggled it. Oh yeah! Incidentally, for those people wondering what the jiggle my rig means, is that when we when we initially started streaming, we used a machine called the iRig, and uh, uh, to for the sound, but it started to to malfunction. Badly, and the only way to get it to work was to jiggle it around until it worked, and that's where the tune "Jiggle My Rig" comes from. Is we spent like fifteen minutes before the beginning of the stream trying to get it to work, and uh, we're like, "Just jiggle it, jiggle the rig, jiggle," you know. And then we're like, "Okay, jiggle my rig, yeah, that's it." And then we did a whole tune around that. There you go. So that's the origin of that that song. If you if you were wondering. Yeah, then, you see, it's less dirty than you may have imagined. Absolutely, there's no, there's nothing involved involving wigs or anything like that. No. So, uh, but anyway, I'd like to thank thank you, Alex, for uh, going through the archives. With oh, it's me a this pleasure. Evening. It's, it's nice to hear it all in in one sitting, and uh, it really is as diverse as I remember doing it. You know, the tempos, the styles, the instrumentation, as we said at the beginning. And hopefully that anyone who's been with us through this um, stream will have heard that for themselves. Yeah, and and I feel and I feel there's also an evolution and a, and the beginning of a certain sound. Right. That, you yeah. know that I is, mean, for that example, is, the the track we just listened to is really recent and very clean. I I very much like the acoustics of it. Yeah, yeah it sounds <coughs> pretty pretty organised. And I think you know, like I said. 
uh, depending on uh, on on you know everything. It depends on like what time of the year you're recording and and you know and what we've been doing during that week and 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 so on. But there's definitely True. like I feel <coughs> since, especially since I bought the Eventide bundle. There's been a certain yeah. <laughs> there's been a certain sound that's just you know begun to to form itself as we've been delving into the eventide effects and enjoying them so much. But again, you know, whilst they're there, they're not overpowering stuff. They're they're there as a support texture in the main. There's a few tracks where they come slightly more forward, but they're never louder than the instruments that are triggering them. For example, no, which I mean, in, you know, obviously in in more far out music um, going towards the zapper end of things or going into the electronic end of things you you could easily get those effects very very easily with the uh, eventide bundle oh no absolutely yeah. it's, it's a very uh, creative it is yeah you know bundle with loads of uh, very textured and and also high quality i've got to say you know verbs there's a reason why yeah. we're able to use really long trail verbs well, inside of, the, of a mix uh, and one of the fun parameters for example they've got a lot of their stuff they've got um gravity and so if you dial it in you can either go from sucking you back to earth to allowing you to float away yes with the tails so you, you know if you want that tail just to, to pin back or if you want it to take off, you, you've got a knob for that on the plugin, which yeah. is quite incredible. And it and it's not like and, it's, and these aren't just like stupid, you know, stupid names and weird, you know, that don't do anything. Like the, that, you know, black hole. It really does make a difference, and you can hear it in the sound when you alter the gravity and you go all the way hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it, sure. it, it 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 changes the nature of the verb, and then when you go the other way, it changes it again. It's it's a it's a very surprising. Uh, you know, a, a verb VST like um. Yeah, it's it's um unusual for not only the parameters that it has that other plugins don't, but the fact that you can get a wide variety of different types of spatial effects from it. Oh yeah, and there's some really horrible ones, like some really harsh, like oh, there's some disgusting, shit in there you know, well. sounds. But I mean, you could imagine, like, if you're doing foley or sound effects, yeah, then you yeah. would use that, you know. Absolutely, but, especially uh, SFX, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. And, uh, and a bit on the flip side, there's some absolutely blinding, you know, like go-to verbs that you could Useful just use stuff, on everything, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that other plugin, the Shimmer, you know, the Eventide Shimmer verb is just as great. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, there's two um guitars both had shimmer verb set differently on each yeah and uh and of course we were panning one three quarters of the way to one side and one three quarters to the other creating a stereo image and because the two verbs on the both sides there are different it's a continuously evolving stereo image as well so it's just extra excitement for the ear even if you don't perceive it because it's not uh jumping out at you it's there in the mix. Yeah, and, and and it was because of the nature of that type of verb where it creates like a double, but that's pitched differently of yeah. in fractals of the, the sound that you put in. So it, like it creates like a chord that plays after what you've just played that's in harmony with it that you can change, you know, you can make it more or less. And so because, you know, it's always the same riff, it made an interesting like harmonic texture behind those guitars because it was like going digger 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 yep. and then behind it was going no 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 like some weird some other notes yep. so that when you're listening back to it every so often you'll be like wait there's some other notes and then occasionally it would coincide with a hand clap and that would come out as well oh yeah because we put the we put the um uh, uh whatchamacallit the spring verb on the hand yep. clap yeah yeah, we put a crazy like spring verb and some other effect. I forgot what it was. Uh, oh, it was a uh, flange, was it? it? We got a a rotary mod, a uh, spring verb, and a compressor on it. Yeah, that's the one. So like, uh, and so and it's, it's very its subtle own thing, yeah. and it's very subtle. Like it's in the background, just behind the sna like to give the snare like some some like texture, really. Like so, it, so it would kind of poke every so often. That's right, and it does. And it does, yeah. That's brilliant. 
So anyway, yeah, we really enjoyed that mix because it was, you know, it was very straightforward, clean sounds to begin mm. with, and and so we were able to mess about with them loads. And it's a slightly easier track to get your head around than some of the other sort of more janky ones, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, but this was straight ahead. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, the, the, yeah. you know, everybody's playing the same thing. Everyone's playing digger, digger, digger. <laughs> You can't go wrong. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. and um, Nice one. We'll be back again. Uh, uh, to record some more to stuff. To record some more stuff. And uh, also we'll be, uh, uh, you know, getting other stuff ready for release so that you can listen to it at home whenever you want. Are you going to big up your platforms, Limmy? All the things? Well, I mean, yeah, don't forget to follow this channel, you know, the little Limmy channel, so you can be notified when work in progress is going on you can also join the work in progress group on facebook and you'll get you know links and uh, uh, notifications for when we're going online uh, you can follow me uh, on lil limmy on instagram uh, on uh, limmy snell on youtube so if you want to check the vods of all the old st streams that we've done uh, and you can also uh, check out uh, what i'm doing you know in in the real world uh, uh, on Little Limmy and the Blue Beats on Facebook. What about you, Alex? Where, where can we get a hold of you? Um, well, again, uh, Facebook, uh, also SoundCloud and MixCloud dot com slash Radio Bomb. Um, uh, got tracks up on Bandcamp dot com slash Radio Bomb. Um, yep. Uh, if there's there's plenty of other platforms out there. Um, via TuneCore I do actually reach the iTunes and all of those um, yeah so online presence for sure and in the real world as you correctly said uh, I've got a few uh, uh, private events coming up in the next few weeks and next month a big uh, festival with a lineup um, expressly Lutte contre le concert so it's a big festival organised where the proceeds are going to fight cancer. Awesome. Um, and that's in the middle of next month. So, uh, yeah, a few things going on. And meanwhile, and I'm taking up far too much of my time, but I'm enjoying it immensely and getting my new album together, featuring artists like uh, Jamowski, uh, Ruby My Dear, Cracking Dub, um, Anti Norm Heretic, and a few others uh, guesting on tracks. So, um, yeah, keeping busy and uh, getting things done. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, so you can it's Radio Bomb on all of the things. All of the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so thanks Apart to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's enough. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll stop I'll, it there. I'll leave the joke till next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, th thanks to Anna on production, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.